Hello, my name is Nicole Van Dale and I am a senior marine science student at Ecker College. This is my presentation on monitoring microplastics in Tampa Bay, along with Dr. Shannon Gallens and Dr. Amy N.S. Sweda. The microplastics program at Eckerd College was started in 2017 by Dr. Gallens and Dr. Sweda. This project has been monitoring seven different stations throughout Tampa Bay for microplastics using various collection methods. New stone nets allow for microplastics observations tied to seagrass abundance. Bucket samples allow smaller particles of plastic to be collected for analysis. Sediment samples can be processed to examine microplastic contained in sediment. And finally, samples from manatees and of copepods allow us to examine the amount of plastic present in large and small grazers of Tampa Bay. All of these different sampling methods allow us to efficiently quantify microplastic particles throughout the estuary and examine their ecological impacts. Tampa Bay is a highly productive estuary system located on the Gulf Coast of Florida. It contains a lot of natural diversity and an abundance of different ecosystems. As previously mentioned, this monitoring program largely focuses on seven different stations within the bay. Boca Ciega Bay, Egmont Key, near the Skyway Bridge, off of Pinellas Point, off of the MacDill Air Force Base, Old Tampa Bay, and Hillsborough Bay. The first sampling method we use involves a net tow. We tow a 1,000 micron Neuston net for 15 minutes at two knots at each station with triplicates at Boca Ciega Bay and Pinellas Point stations. Once the net tow is complete, we spray down the net into cod ends, making sure to be thorough and collect all potential microplastics in seagrass. In the lab, all of the seagrass is stripped and sprayed down with millicute water. The water is then filtered through a 20 micron and 212 micron sieve and allowed to settle in beakers for further processing. The seagrass is dried and weighed to compare microplastic concentrations. The next sampling method we use is discrete bucket sampling. Bucket samples are taken using clean 20 liter buckets off the side of the boat at each station with replicates at Boca Ciega Bay and Pinellas Point. Contamination is reduced as much as possible. Back in the lab, these samples are sieved through 20 and 212 micron sieves and allowed to settle in beakers for further processing. In response to high variation in 1,000 micron net tow and discrete bucket samples taken bi-monthly at the seven stations across the bay, we started high frequency sampling in January 2019 and have since done about five rounds. This sampling was from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m bi-hourly for two consecutive days of three consecutive weeks. By keeping the location the same off the edge of the pier near Eckerd College Galbraith Marine Science Laboratory, microplastic concentrations are able to be compared with environmental factors like tide, wind, and precipitation to examine variation in plastic concentrations on a finer scale. This monitoring project has also looked at microplastics in sediment. Sediment samples were collected in September cruises using a petite ponar sampler. In the lab, microplastics were separated from the sediment using an elutriation column. Plastics were then density separated from the remaining material using a sodium iodide solution. These samples were settled in beakers for further processing. Once all of these samples were separated into beakers for further processing, the top layer is poured into a clean beaker leaving behind any organic or sedimentary material that may have settled out. Then samples are dyed with Nile red at a ratio of three milliliters of Nile red per 20 milliliters of sample. After 20 to 30 minutes, samples are then filtered onto 47 millimeter five micron black polycarbonate filters. Next samples are imaged under cyan light in an orange filter, causing any microplastics pieces to fluoresce. The microplastics are then quantified using image analysis. This method allows for a higher degree of objectivity while quantifying plastics, especially microplastics that are too small to see. This is what a filter looks like under white light versus cyan light with an orange filter. You can see in the background on the right, the plastics are glowing and visible against the black background. These plastics are then able to be quantified with image analysis. While we have taken multiple approaches to look at microplastics at the surface waters and in the sediment, we have also looked at plastics in the grazers to determine ecological impacts. 
Manatees that have died in Tampa Bay are sent to the Marine Mammal Pathobiology Laboratory, where samples are taken from five locations along their digestive tract, including their stomach, proximal colon, distal colon, cecum, and duodenum. Gut contents are mixed with water and put through a 212 micron sieve. All potential plastic pieces visible to human eye are removed from the sample and confirmed through testing with Nile Red or a hot needle test. They are then measured and counted. In general, we have found at least one piece of plastic in each manatee sample. Finally, we have looked at plastics in small grazers, copepods as well. At each of the seven stations in the bay, a 200 micron net was towed for three minutes. Then the contents was sprayed down into a cotton and sieved through a 200 micron sieve. Then contents were collected in ethanol and um, in the lab, a thousand copepods were picked per sample when available. The sample was digested to release the gut contents of the copepods and stained with Nile Red in a ratio of one milliliter of Nile Red per five milliliters of sample. Samples were then filtered and imaged for analysis. In the picture on the bottom right, you can see the bright yellow plastic piece glowing next to more orange looking copepods. We would like to thank the project's funding agencies, the Tampa Bay Environmental Restoration Fund and the Hillsborough County Pollution Recovery Fund. Please reach out with any questions you may have.